money to ride a horse. Don't even talk about owning a horse back then. Now I have nine. <laughs> so I made up for it. But, um, but um, coming back from where I came from, I only ever got the horses that were unrideable because nobody else would ride those horses. Can anybody relate to that? Um, so because I didn't have money to have my own horses, I had to ride whatever I was given. So I got the different horses like me. See here. You can see how spirited she is. She's great though. I'll, I'll ride her a little bit later. But, Missy is an extroverted horse, Red is an introverted horse. Different, they need different things to be kind of um, inspired, if you like, to, to do the work that we want them to do. As you can see, Red here is really relaxed. She's cocking her hind leg. She's thinking, you know, this is so good. Um, as long as we're standing still, she's half asleep, as you can see. <laughs> but. Um, if you um, if you have an introverted horse, they often respond really well to trees. Has anybody noticed that? So what we want to do is, Missy, can you stop harassing the person? <laughs> so what I want to do with uh, any horse that I'm riding is taking into consideration if they're introverted, then that's that. Uh, I ask very little and give a lot when they do a little. And if I have an extroverted horse, my predominant aim is to funnel their energy into what I want them to do. So the introverted horse, uh, when I ride them, it's very much about how can I get you to do something and then do only a little bit of it. And then give her, you know, make a big seal out of it. Good girl, good girl for stopping, a good girl for walking, you know, for 10 meters. But what this does is it uh, makes the horse want to do things that it can then rest from. So for red horse here, she loves rest, she loves food. So if I want to train her, I want to ask her to do things that I want her to do and then give her those things that are important to her. Missy, on the other hand, doesn't like rest. She's not interested in rest. She just wants to play. She just wants to be with you all the time, preferably in your lap, but she's a little bit large to be a lap animal. Uh, but she just wants to do stuff all the time. So that's her, if you like, uh, reward for doing what I ask her to do. So she's with her, I want her to be more contained. And with Red Horse, I want her to be more forward going and exuberant. Does that make sense? Yeah, excellent. So if I ask Red to just walk forward, that was really good. I don't really use much leg um, in the very basic thing. So if I want the horse to move forward, I'm just going to hold here. So her energy is a bit high right now. She's usually so much more introverted. But as you can see, she's very relaxed. So if I want her to go forward, I just say, put my energy up and say, okay, let's go forward. So as you can see, I didn't even use my legs. And that for introverted horses is very good. Uh, usually when introverted horses, you know, they, because they don't want to move, you have to kind of coax them. You have to kind of make a lot of noise. But um, I like to bring even the introverted horses to a place where... Ooh, where they move off, where they move off from the slightest remark, from the slightest ask. So I don't tell, I never tell the horses to do something. I ask them to do something. You know, so if I wanted to go, okay, let's go back into the wall. Can you see how she's not responding now? She's like, okay, I know what this is. So now I'm gonna squeeze with my bum. I'm going to squeeze with my thumb, so I'm still not squeezing with my legs. Does that make sense? So then when I want her to move forward, if I'm trotting her, whatever, and I want her to go faster, I don't have to use my legs to go forward. I can just, you know, go into the trot, squeeze with my bum instead of... And if I then need to use the legs, then I'll use the legs, so then that's fine. But I want to give her an opportunity to... Oh, good girl. I want to give her an opportunity to go without me having to push her. Does that make sense? So it's all about asking her nicely 
And then if I have to ask a little bit further, I'll do that and then see if she responds. If I have to ask a little bit further than that, then I'll do that. But I don't want her to feel like she's all the time being forced into things. So let's just see after that ask if this is going to be easier. And we're not getting upset about it or anything, just being, you know, this is what we're going to do. So I'm not making any emotional decisions. I'm just saying we're just going to do this and that's just how it's going to be. There's no need to get upset. There's no need to really kind of get upset and get after your horse. Um, it's only really in dangerous situations where you see my bring, me bring my energy up to the kind of, uh, you know, where I really need to make a point really quickly. But again, it's not emotional, so there's no emotions involved in riding. The only, the only time you use emotions when you're riding is when you're connecting with where the horse is. So I'm going to ask Red Horse to s s slow down its fault again. Okay, that was great. And the way I did it was I <laughs> used my emotions because I knew that she likes to stop. Does that make sense? It's an introvert horse, she likes to not move. So I gave her what she wanted to do. So emotionally, I, I, uh, I, I kind of uh, went where red is, what works for her, and then made a thinking decision to do that. Okay, so let's go forward again. So soon I'll be riding this today, so you'll see what the differences are. So let's see if it's just a little bit easier this time. Oh, that's good. That's really nice. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna change direction a little bit. And again, with an introverted horse, I wanna keep it super fluent. So I'm not like yanking with my with my hands or anything. So I'm kind of stroking the rein to ask her to, to move. And she's 28 too, so she's not gonna be very flexible or very, you know, athletic. Okay, let's see if I'm this direction. Oh, that was nice. which are 
I'm going upwards, come with me, and my rein is going to be this short. And that's all it is. And then I allow the horse to find her own space within that frame. Did you ever go dancing, ballroom dancing with somebody who's really good dancer and you just, you know, you, you're not necessarily all that good, but you went dancing together and it felt really magic when the other person was leaning? Did you ever have that experience? That's what we like this to be like. So I don't want her to feel like I'm dragging her across the dance floor with me or forcing her to do things she doesn't want to do. So now that she's starting to find her own frame, I'm going to go back into relaxed seat and give her a break because she's an introvert. So she needs to do little bits at, at a time, not too much. Okay? And as you can see, she's stretching down. If you're into dressage, just a little pointer here. You know, when you teach your horse to collect like this, and then you go, you do a free walk, maybe across the diagonal or something, they really start, you know, stretching and putting their heads down. Does that make sense? So, so this, this is a, this actually works for your walk work as well in a dress up. Okay, so I'm just gonna say, okay, come up here with me. Come up here with me, and then I'm gonna ask her to find her own frame within that. <coughs> Okay. Let me see, get out of the way. Come on. Okay. So I'm asking her to find her own frame. So I'm not doing the work for her. I'm asking her to move forward, but also respect that the reins are shorter. And she's nearly giving in from the pole. We'll see when she starts giving in from the pole, when she starts to push the pole upwards. And immediately when she does it, I go back into relaxed form. So she's not doing it yet. She's trying to wiggle her way out this way, that way. She's moving herself, trying to not appreciate the parameters that I'm giving her. And I'm saying, okay, no, no, come up here with me. Come up here with me and you find your own frame within the parameters. You carry yourself. I don't want to carry you. There. Perfect. And if you could see, just before I released, if, I don't know if you could see, but her back went up slightly, so she just became completely round through the top line. Does that make sense? So let's just see if this happens faster this time. Come up here with me. So I'm thinking upwards. <coughs> Good girl. Good girl. Can you see her pushing through the behind end? Pushing through the back? Now she started to get wiggly again, so I'm just going to say, no, let's go over here. Let's go over here. Okay, good. That was good. So it's that tiny little give when their pole relaxes, because you know how their pole is, they can move their heads. So if this is the pole, which is here, oops, I'll just turn around so you can all see. <laughs> so the pole is just here, just behind the ears. So if this is the horse's head and this is their pole, the horse's head moves like this, but it also moves like this. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the horse's pole, when they're carrying themselves, is not locked into any one position. It should be fluid. If it's locked, that's when you start to get into the patterns of having to push the horse into different directions and use the rein, you know, tickle the horse's mouth through the bit with, the, with your fingers and stuff like that. You don't actually need to do any of that stuff. Any, any of that stuff that a lot of... And no offense, pony clubs and riding clubs teach, the old style teaching is, you know, do this with your fingers and the horse will go on the bit. It doesn't actually, it doesn't actually um, allow the, it doesn't invite the horse to carry him or herself as much as if you just hold the frame and ask the horse to fill the frame. So I'm holding the dancer's frame and I'm asking the horse to fill, come with me up here and feel that. Can you see how much more relaxed she is and much more bendy she is in her pole already? She's, she's able to kind of, she's, she has a lot more lateral flexibility rather than being locked in one position. This 
these are very difficult, or these can be difficult things to see because, you know, change can be so minute. So I'm just inviting, I'm sorry if this is a bit boring, I'm inviting you to see, see the tiny little small changes. So can you see how she's pushing through the hind end? Her back is nicely, the top line is she's carrying herself through the back. And immediately when, so I'm going to ask her a bit more, so come a little bit further up with me here. There we go. And immediately when she does this, because she's an introvert, I give her the rein. Because now the next time I do that, it's going to be faster. And if I immediately release that again, it'll be faster again. And if I immediately release it again, it'll be faster again. So you get into this, um, this kind of rhythm of the horse filling the frame that you're offering and whatever that frame is. So that could be going sideways, it could be going backwards, it could be jumping a fence. That frame could literally be anything. So, I'm going to ask her one more time. So, let's go up here. Let's go up here. Come up with me. Is she chewing? I don't have a bridle, as you can see. I'll be riding in a halter. Because, and Missy hasn't really been ridden all that much. She was deemed unrideable and dangerous when I got her three years ago. And just last Tuesday, I think it was a Wednesday, was the first time that uh, we jumped a couple of cross country fences. So that was fun. But uh, it's nice to have those experiences that, you know, so many people have given up on Missy. These are both rescue horses. So many people have given up on her, and it's so nice to hear a good deal. It's so nice to be able to say, you know what? I'm not going to do that to you. We're going to build a relationship, and we're going to do it the way that we're going to do it, and it's going to take the time that it takes. And that's just how it is. So if you have horses and you, if you have time pressures, and take it from me, I mean, I used to be a professional rider, as in, I had sponsorship and everything. You have, when you have sponsorship, you have certain criteria that you have to fill. You have certain 
conditions that you have to abide by and you have certain, um, like you basically can't get injured, you can't have injuries and not be able to ride or you can't have your horses have injuries and, and so on. So, but when you don't have that pressure and probably most of you don't get paid to ride your horse and that's, that's a wonderful position to be in so you can just take the time that it takes. Does that make sense? more sensitive to moving forward and doing things and she is likely to put her to try and kind of hey Red, thanks for joining us huh? and this is a lot more likely to try to you know back and to try to do things because it doesn't like to be forced to have horse mistakes so you probably know exactly what I'm talking about there are certain horses that you can't force and I think that was the reason why Missy had become so dangerous because people tried to force her and she fought back and I don't want to fight back because you know I don't want to get injured I have this sense of self-preservation that I'm not really interested in, in getting injuries if I don't have to I have nothing to prove so I can just you know you know take whatever so let's see how busy responds to going forward into trot Okay, that was pretty contained. <laughs> okay. So my idea with Missy is that I'm funneling the energy. That I'm not at all forcing her, pushing her into positions that she's not ready for. As you can see, she has a nervous way back. So it's very important that we build her confidence to put her head down and to relax through the top line and allow it to take the time that it takes so that we don't push it wrong. I'm surprised I haven't been bumped off yet, by the way. So, good on good you, Missy. Thank you for being such a good part. She doesn't really get to get to buck off, but anyway, he doesn't stop her from trying. Okay, so that's good. So I'm going to ask her to slow down into walk. Okay, well, that was good. I am sorry if this is very boring for you again. <laughs> I was anticipating something a lot more. Okay, let's change the direction. Okay, and going into trot. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. So, so with her, I'm still... Yeah, there we go. I'm, with Miss, I'm still making sure that because she is very green, and she has, you see her tail swishing? She has these attitudes about things and how things should be according to Missy. <laughs> that we want to make sure that, yeah, there we go. Can you see that attitude, that little thing? Um, I want to make sure that we stay as relaxed as possible while still doing things. So with an extroverted horse, you want to make sure that the horse is moving forward, that it's able to express his or her natural way of being. So, yeah, good girl. Yeah, good girl. Yeah, you're right. So as you can see, she's wanting to, she's wanting to express herself through the bucking. And if I at that stage go, you're a bad horse, and start pulling her and pushing her into the form, what am I teaching her? I'm teaching her to buck. Yeah, exactly. So we don't want to do that, ideally. So let's see the canter in this direction. She's very green. Good girl. Wow. Girl. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah. Yeah. Good girl. So as you can see, I'm not pulling her. I'm just letting her canter under my seat so that she can find her own balance. Does that make sense? So, <coughs> this horse, as a green horse, very different from red. I mean, this is already 16, so she shouldn't be green, but she is because she wasn't green before, because 
She's unrideable. This heart wants to express herself in a very different way to Red. Red wants to express herself by doing things in a really solid, slow, deliberate way. Whereas Missy likes to be a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit over there. She likes to do different things, so I need to respect that. Because if I try to ride her the way I tried, the way I ride her, red horse, what will happen is that I'm going to drive Missy insane with the precision stuff. Does that make sense? And she's not going to like that. So I want to, I need to do, whereas precision stuff is good for red, she enjoys it, she loves it. Uh, if I try to ride red horse in a way that I'm riding uh, Missy, what will happen is that she will think that I'm being a predator because I'm being more playful. You have to respect the differences that your horses are giving you. And again, if you can learn to ride in a way that you give the horse a frame that you can then invite them to feel, that's when you dance with your horse. Does that make sense? Otherwise, like riding should be like dancing. We can't, if we can't feel, if we can't invite the horse to feel a frame, good girl, sorry I'm just have a drink. <laughs> if we force the horse to dance, it's not going to be enjoyable for her or You probably notice I'm on the horse from both sides. I think it's just better for your saddle. <laughs> but it's also better for your horse. Okay, so let's play again. learns to offer things until they get it right and so they start to anticipate what is it that you actually want and when they you know the more right they get things the more confident they grow in oh yeah that's what she was asking for with that and again I'm not pushing her with my legs you know even in the canter so I'm not pushing her to go into the right canter I'm saying we're going into this direction. There we go. Yeah. So again, I'm not getting upset with her. I'm just saying that's cool. You're an extrovert. I get it. But let's try this. Good girl. And forward. Let's put this energy to go forward. So instead of her bucking, let's say let's go forward. 
Let's go forward. Good girl. Okay. Oh, 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 good girl. So, what have we learned? Punishing horses doesn't work. They don't understand it. Giving them an opportunity to think for themselves and learn to respond in different way makes them inquisitive and makes them want to, it, it becomes a language rather than you just telling the person. It becomes a conversation. Does that make sense? So if I'm going to do that, hello. If I'm going to do that, what I was doing with bread, if I'm going to do that early stages of collection, I'm going to go, okay, cool. This is the relaxed frame. Now let's go into dancer's frame. Let's go into dancer's frame. Come up here with me. Come up here. And she's trying to squiggle her way out of it, which is fine. So I just say, no, no, let's go up here. Up. Up here. And when she, re when she responds, I'm just going to turn her across here. <clears throat> let's go up here. When she responds, there's too many things to look at. Come on over here. So you can see I'm using a lot of leading rein. So again, it's not, I'm not pulling back and trying to micromanage them. I'm saying, hang on a second, here's the frame. Let's go over here, let's go up. Now she's starting to think, huh, if I go up with her, then she's gonna relax. And now I'm teaching, just like with Red Horse, whenever I release the pressure, she's putting her head down. Can you see that? So, and remember with Missy, she has this way back. So we want her to put her head down. Hello. 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 <laughs> you want to go and have a look? Hello. Oh. Hello. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One more. One more, Missy. Hello. Hello. Hi. Can you see how social she is? She just loves this stuff. She's like, can we do more? Whereas Red over there is like, yeah, I'm retired now for the day. I'm done. Where's the oats? Okay. So let's try that. Again. Oh, good girl. Let's try that again. I'm inviting her to come up with me. So come up here with me. Let's go upwards. Okay. Let's go upwards. Let's just turn across. Let's go upwards. And all I'm doing is I'm providing with her with the red, with the frame. And I'm asking her to turn because she's not turning. As you can see, she, she's a bit like, I'm going that way. No, no, we're going this way. Let's go up there. Let's go up. There we go. Can you see how she's starting to really relax from the pole? And so that was enough to keep her because she's very green. So we have an old a ter geriatric horse and we have a green horse. So it's like, I'm sorry that I won't be doing any flashy dressage movements for you today, but let's go upwards. This is, by the way, the first time she's hearing the speakers too. She's taking it pretty well. So let's go upwards. Oh. Did you see that? It was just that slight relaxation of the pole. And now she's stretching downwards. Can you see that? And this is exactly what we want. And so what I'm doing with Missy at the moment is I'm getting her... If, we, if I was just doing this work that I'm doing right now, she'd be bored out of her stall in a week, right? So I have to do the other fun stuff. The fun stuff. <laughs> but... Um, Let's go up one. But she's responding to this, and what I want her to do is strengthen her back. And that's why I release so that she stretches. I want her to be as long as possible. And up again. Ooh, that was easier that time. Let's go up a little bit more. 
So I'm just creating a frame for her to feel. It's like I've done that. This stupid collection bizzle. You're pushing my body into positions where I know on the long term I'll be fine, but now it feels uncomfortable. So upwards we go. Good girl. Oh, that's nice. So now I'm gonna stretch her out in front. Can you see that stretch? How cool is that? So it's like if I ask her, if I ask her to fill the frame in walk and she learns to stretch down in walk, then I can invite her to do the same in front. So I can say, let's fill this frame, let's go upwards. I might even sit down. Let's go up. Oh, nice. And then I can let her stretch down. Okay, good girl. And again. Down. Up. Oh, can you see that? She's relaxing from the pole and coming through the back. This more. Now she's she's sticking her head to face out. So what she's doing is, I don't know, you guys can probably see, she's pushing her ribs out into the like into the inside, so she's a little bit crooked. So what I want her to do is not do that because that locks her pole. Okay, let's go upwards. Let's go upwards. Good girl. Let's go upwards. There we go. Good girl. And then relax again. So she has an opportunity to stretch down. <laughs> Apologies for the cough. I've been sick for the last week. So. so now I can ask her to stretch down. And relax. That's nice. How does that look? Pretty good, eh? Feels pretty Oh, good girl. Backwards. So I'm just creating a frame. Did you see that? So immediately, when I didn't want to wait to draw your attention to that because I want to release immediately. Okay. And one more time into this direction. She's falling onto the inside shoulder, so I'm just going to ask her not to do that. Okay, good. Good. Okay, let's go into front. Let's go upwards. So, create a frame. Ask the horse to fill the frame. Walk on. No. She's falling into the inside shoulder, you can see it. I'm gonna ask her not to do that. Yeah, that's it. Well done, good girl. So all you have to do in order to collect your horse is offer them a frame and wait until they learn to fill the frame, then release. You don't need double bridles, you don't need spurs, you don't need any of those things. All you gotta do is just wait until the horse figures out what you're asking for him to do. And once he figures it out, he wants to do the right thing by you. Does that make sense? And where we usually shoot ourselves in the foot is if the horse isn't doing the thing fast enough, what happens is that we start to try different things. It's like we don't have patience to wait and then we start to do different things and then you know it can go south very quickly from there has anybody ever experienced that <laughs> so i used to ride in a very micromanaging way good girl and i found that all it did for me was give me a back problem <laughs> and a uh, very sour horse 
So now I like my horses happy and fluent and flexible, and I like to ride them in a way that's right for them. Let's see how we are for time. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes for questions. If you have questions, I'll just come over here. Please ask questions because the questions are really that give, you know, what gives the most value.